Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I thought I'd do just a brief walkthrough of M Stereo Processor and show how I usually use it. So, as you see here, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, one of the great things about it is it has four different bands, so you can adjust all these separately. So, for example, you can mono the bass, which I often do, and you can also widen different parts of the frequency spectrum. And also it has this handy display here that will show you if you're too wide or, you know, too mono, etc. So, let's get started. So, I just have it on the default settings, and I have a backing track here. I'll let you listen to it. Okay, so you get the idea. As you saw here in the display, you can see if you're getting too wide or too narrow. And if you want to hear it, you can just click here for the mid, and you just hear the mid part of the signal, what's in mono. Or you can do the opposite, click side, and just hear the stereo parts. Now, all that's useful, but I think the meat and potatoes of this is this part here. So, let's take a look here. Each of these has a different band, like bass, low mids, high mids, and highs. And you can adjust these and where they lie in the frequency spectrum down here. So, I'm going to move this to, let's say, around 150. And what I usually do is I hit solo here. So, now I'm only going to hear this bass part. Let me move this back to default now you see our display here it looks mostly mono if it's just a straight line you know it's completely mono but there's some stereo parts and I don't really want that for things under 150 so all I have to do is just take this widening and move it down here all the way to the left and it says mono. Now let's hear it. I like that. Now let's do the next band, which is the low mids. Let's listen to this. And you see here now it's from 150, or around 150, to 2000. I think that's a bit too much. So I'm gonna move this to around 1K. Let's hear this. Now that's okay, I could maybe make that slightly narrower, but I think it's all right. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Let's move up to the high mids. Now this, I'm gonna move it down just a little bit to around 8,000. So now this is between 1,000 and 8,000. Let's solo it and listen to it. I think that sounds pretty good, but what I want to do here is actually make this a little bit wider, and we actually have two methods to do it. The normal widening will widen things, but it's not quite as extreme. But the good part about this widening is it's mono compatible. And we also have the delay and the delay width. This will make things wider, but sometimes it can cause comb filtering effects, so you have to listen carefully to make sure you're not doing that. So let's just use the normal widening here. Let's listen to it and make it a bit wider. I think that's a good amount. Now, the high band. Let's listen to this. These are just things like cymbals that really upper band, but let's really get crazy and widen this. Let's try the other one, the delay and the delay width and the widening together.
So now things are much wider, but let's try the exciter. What the exciter is going to do is it's going to add a little saturation so you can get more of the harmonics. So let's try it on this upper band so we can get a little bit of sparkle in our top end. Okay, so I put this at 20%. Now, when you're doing this, oftentimes I feel like, ah, I want to crank it all the way up to 60 or 70 or 80, and it sounds good. But then when I end up bypassing it, it's like, oh, wow, it sounds nice. But a day later, I'm like, wow, it's way too bright. So let's try it at 20%, and let's see what this sounds like. Sounds pretty good. Now let's bypass it and unbypass it so you can hear the difference. Here's it is bypassed. So you see, it just added a lot more width and a little bit more sparkle. And of course, check this with some reference tracks to make sure you're not making it too bright or too wide, etc. And another thing I like to do, just in case, is I like to check this in mono. So let's put this in mono, play it, and then bypass it and unbypass it. If you hear things disappearing when it's on and then reappearing when you bypass it, you know you probably messed something up, usually with the delay and the delay width. But if everything's okay, you know, you're good to go. So let's hear it in mono first. Okay, I didn't hear anything that was too weird there, so I can put it back into stereo and I'm pretty much good to go. There's a few other things that I didn't mention here, like the gain, the panorama. I wouldn't use it for this, like a master track, but if I was using it on an individual instrument, I can pan it left or right, etc. Uh, there's global widening if, let's say, I had a just a pad and I wanted to make it wider, or I just might want to use an exciter on that. On a whole track like this, I wouldn't want to, you know, excite some of the lower frequencies personally, but you can sometimes using the exciter on like the bass or the low mids can add a little bit of you know, warmth or something. And last but not least is the crossover. Sometimes you'll find some differences between these crossovers. The analog is a minimum phase, I believe, which can sometimes add some type of uh, phase problems, but it's usually okay, in my opinion. Uh, you can, if you don't like that, and you notice like, hey, hey, there are phase problems, you can use the linear phase instead, but that will cause latency, and in a few cases, it might cause pre-ringing, but I think the best is just to use your ears. For me, I usually don't notice too much difference between any of them, but of course, listen yourself and see which you like the best. That's it for today. If you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Until next time, see you.